Namaste, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to this class, Building a Balanced Scorecard from Scratch Using Excel. My name is Dr. Warren Leslie Chalk, a graduate of the Bush School of Government and Public Service at Texas A&M University, and a passionate educator in the field of performance measurement and multiculturalism. Traveling the world, I've come to one conclusion. Organizations are spending thousands of dollars on consultants and software to operationalize a performance or balance scorecard. Well, working with a team of experts, we unlocked the secrets to putting this balance scorecard in an Excel format, which is absolutely free. And that is what this course is going to teach you. This course is ideal for anyone working in a small, medium or large organization who is interested in both increasing your organizational performance and saving money. Because we work together, no prerequisite knowledge in Excel is required. All I ask is that you come to this course with an open mind and ready to learn. Working together in this project-based class, we cover three main sections. We begin with the dashboard, the heart of the balanced scorecard. We then look at our perspectives, where I help you construct and formulate Excel to meet your needs. And finally, we look at the input sheets, where we learn how to input data so that it links back to our perspectives and our dashboard system. Feel free to look through the course description and I look forward to seeing you in the class. Ni hao, assalamu alaikum, jambo sana. My name is Dr. Warren Leslie Chalklin, a graduate of the Bush School of Government and I have spent the last five years traveling around the world, analyzing the performance of organizations. And one of the things I've learned is that every organization is seeking to improve its performance. Some of those organizations are spending thousands of dollars on software and consultants to, you, to create what is known as a performance scorecard or a balance scorecard. Well, while working with the team at the Bush School of Government and under the tutelage of an incredible professor, we designed a very, very efficient and effective tool using Excel. And the purpose of this course is for me to show you and for us to build a performance scorecard from scratch using Excel. I've given you a template that you have. You're going to download that in the next lecture before we get started. And what we're going to do in this course is take you from the start all the way to the end and what at the end of the day you will have a tool through which you can track not only track your performance but make important decisions and plan your organizational strategy i welcome you to this class if you have any questions please post them in the discussion board if you would like to engage in a community of students please feel welcome in the next lecture i'm going to be outlining the dashboard Right after this call, right after this particular lecture, please can you download the two attachments so we can get started. Welcome and I look forward to meeting you. Hello and welcome to this class. Before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone has downloaded the Excel document as well as the term sheet. Because this is a project-based class, we'll be using those throughout so that the end result is that you will eventually have your own scorecard for your organization. The outcomes for this lesson are twofold. One, I want to talk to you about what this dashboard actually means. And two, I want to talk to you about the content that we'll be putting into this dashboard. The scorecard dashboard is the heart of the organization. It's the way in which you are able to wake up at any time of the night and come to this dashboard and see how your organization is doing visually. All right, It is a place in which you can put all the moving pieces in one place. Now you will notice that my scorecard looks slightly different to yours. That's because I've personalized it. And I would highly recommend that as we go through this course, you make your scorecard, your template, represent you and your organization. Right, so we have my organization name, we have our logo in the left hand over here, we have our mission, which, to, which is to provide exceptional services to marginalized young people and their families, and we also have our vision over here. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to the perspectives over here. We have these different pieces over here that are really important. I'm going to talk through them before we start getting into the content. 
A perspective is a lens through which to view your organization. And any organization that seeks to fulfill its mission must ensure that it meets the needs and wants of its clients. In order for it to meet the needs and wants of its clients, it has to have powerful internal processes, right? In order for it to have internal processes that are powerful, effective, and efficient, it has to have good professional development. Professional development is key. And finally, to put that all together, it has to have a solid financial grounding. So if you can imagine, these perspectives are lenses through which to view your organization. And that's why they on the left-hand side. To the right, we have the performance, which I call these performance blocks. What they are is visuals of what the, your, how your organization is doing. If it's green, if this block turns green, and I will teach you how to change the colors of these blocks, it means your organization is doing well. If it's yellow, it means your organization is doing okay. And if it's red, it means your organization needs to look at how it's addressing these specific measures. Okay. Now, the mission also has an objective. Now, these objectives, we have two objectives for the mission, come from my mission over here. Okay. And I've broken these down into two broad. Notice these are broad. We use the words create opportunities over here. And we use the terms build a more inclusive organization. Objectives are designed to be quite broad. Okay? And so when you're thinking about when you input your own mission and you input your own objectives, think about them in a broad way. It's where we come to the measures that we begin to use words like percentage, the, the percentage of people or the number of people. And so in your measures, I want you to think about uh, specific ways in which you could measure this. In this case, we're talking about the percentage of customers served and the percentage of new customers served. And we've said each one will be 3%. We want to serve 3% more of our clients this year. And we want to recruit 3% more of our clients compared to the previous year. Okay? Now, that's the, our target. What we actually get, in other words, the actual, um, is based on how well we do this year. And so if we only get 1%, that number will be reflected here. Before I, before I forget, everyone needs to put have ownership of this program. And so I am the person who is responsible for uh, getting the new customers. And finally, the notes. Who is responsible has also, as I said earlier, is going to have different colors. And so this explains that. If we get 3%, it will be great. We'll have green. Yellow will be 2.9 and 1%. And red will be my, underneath 0.99%. Okay, now I'm going to be talking you through each one of these perspectives and walking you through them. Our client focus, we spoke about strengthening our referral services and increasing our customer satisfaction. And as we decided to increase our client services by 3%, Tandi is in charge of that. And we wanted to ensure that this year we reached a goal of having 80% of our clients indicate that they were happy with our services, that they received top quality services from us. Now, our internal pr processes, we had two key areas we wanted to deal with, and that was the pro productivity of our staff and the pro productivity of our programs. Right? Now, when it came to our staff, we had more than one measure. Remember, these measures and objectives can be broken down into even more and I wanted to use this as an example as uh, for that. We have our percentage, we want 75% of our staff operating at a skilled level. We want 25% of our staff operating at an excellent level. We want 3% of our staff moving up compared to the previous year and we want to totally eradicate those who are operating at an unsatisfactory level and that's the job of both Puso and, J and James. Okay. We also wanted to make sure that we held our program staff available and we wanted to meet 90% of our productivity targets. Very, very critical. Okay, now let's get to professional development. We wanted to accredit our staff and we wanted to make sure that every single person in our organization was accredited. All right. Now, remember, an objective is quite broad and we'll be getting a little bit more into more detail as to what that accreditation looks like. Okay, 
And we also wanted to make sure that we improved our retention. We wanted to make sure that at least two-thirds of our staff are still with us this year compared to previous years. One of the biggest costs in any organization is training and hiring. So we wanted to diminish that cost. Finally, we got to the financial perspective where we wanted to increase the sustainability of our programs by increasing the number of programs operating at a balanced budget. We wanted to make sure that we had we wanted to spend 97% of our money uh, effectively and make sure that we had a balanced budget. We also wanted to increase our charitable giving, both our restricted and our unrestricted giving, and dear Sheila is responsible for that. Okay, so, and you will notice something just before we get, just before I close up this lecture, you will notice that these perspectives also are indicated at the bottom. Here you will see the mission, the customer focus. And you will notice that these sheets, we will now begin to put these objectives from here, these objectives, into these sheets over here. And you will notice how this dashboard becomes the crossroads, the heart, the heartbeat of our scorecard. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the discussion board. And I look forward to seeing your new scorecards. Feel free to send me some pictures and screenshots. Up to this point, I've taught you how to update the input sheets for your department. For the Community and Housing Services, I went through in detail how we go about updating this and crafting this input sheet. Now, because you have a variety of contexts and your departments, you may have many departments, many programs and the like, these input sheets will look different to you. My hope is that you have had some basics to begin to craft your your input sheet to look like your organization. I've already begun to do that. I've already begun to link these uh, input sheets to my different perspectives, right? And um, nothing should look new to you. All of this is from paid job training, just in case you may be a bit confused about where I got these from. Once again, I got these from the objectives. I'm looking at paid job training. That's where my focus is right now. I'm looking at this specific, um, because workforce only has one measure, right? So as I went down, I just updated using the different targets that came from my perspective. And I updated, notice hourly work um, comes from the internal processes in terms of hourly work. So this is different. And you'll notice now that the only thing I've left um, for us to look, do together is the professional development, all right? And so we go into professional development, we click here, we say equals to, we go to workforce this time, we say, click in that cell and we say equals to. Great, let's do the same thing for paid job training in our retention, our staff retention. All right, and we're going to go right in here, say yes, and click that in there. Fantastic. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing for the finances. I haven't managed to get there yet, so we're going to do that together. Remember, the first thing we do is we put in our formula, our G19 divided by H19. Remember, our expenses divided by our revenue. Now, there's not anything else. There's only production uh, services here, right? Sorry. We only have here housing production and services to, to think about when we think about paid job training, right? So we have our expenses and our revenue, and we put these in each month. Now, what I need to do is go into my financial test and put this ratio in over here and press equals to great. So anything we put in here in these values, let's say I make, we spend $20,000 on a new program and that program brings us back $50,000. Our ratio is 40%. We go in here and there we go 0.4, which is also the same as 40%. So we're below and as we can see, it's updating here. Uh, fantastically and obviously because these here are um, sort of unformatted if you will these are not going to update because there's no numbers it's not zero it's actually an error message all right so when we start putting numbers in here these will start updating so just to give you an idea I've gone through and, and what I'm going to start doing now is you will notice in the next lecture I'll be doing the final um, program which is children and family services 
and then we're going to come back and connect to our dashboard. So I'll see you in the next lecture.